This is such a beautiful story. Do you add African myths, folklores you've read in the past into your stories? And onto the story weaving God might fit this so well. First off, thank you so much for your kind words. I appreciate that very much. Yes, I'm my PJs. Um, today was a rough day on the chronic illness, mental health side of things. So I have been doing a lot of resting today. But to answer your question, so the Tibrarian, um, my main character for this story that I'm working on, he is a descendant of a Nazi. I'm not really going to say anything else about his character right now, but that is part of who he is, hence his ability to tell stories and weave stories. I think that's so important. Um, a Nazi is a huge influence in my life. Um, I love using the term story weaving for making up stories on the spot, especially when I would tell stories to my children or to students, like made up ones. I love to make up stories for a group. It feels so magical and sacred and like this beautiful thing to be crafting a story in front of an audience and pulling in elements of things you know about them and weaving them into the story that you're telling. It's so much fun. I love it. I wish I was like so good at it that I could just, that'd be like my career is like how comedians go on tour and tell their jokes or whatever. I think it'd be so cool to be so good at this that I went on tour and I would get and when everybody bought their tickets they would also like fill out like information about themselves movies stories things they love and then I would come in and tell stories and weave those elements and oh I don't know it just sounds really cool to me but yeah so I did that and there's another story I wrote called how a tea party saved a life and that main character was kind of um, inspired by well Anansi and the Mad Hatter um, character development's hard I'm really learning how to do that and how to build a character that is unique I mean technically there's nothing new under the sun but like something that doesn't feel like a direct ripoff of someone else do you know what I mean that's tough to do and it's easy to make a short story it's hard to do make a novel anyway whatever but I'm trying anyway and we'll see what happens but I also tried my hand at a bit of a Nazi fan fiction and I am working on a story a short story that's like that would I, I that I would I'm writing a story I would imagine would belong in my book of African myths and legends um, and I'm going to share that with you guys pretty soon I'm pretty excited about that and it was a lot of fun to to work on a fun idea to explore um, trying to come up with adventures for Anansi or exploits for him um, yeah, that was it. I just kind of wanted to get on here real quick and say I loved your comment. And yes, I love Anansi. I love African folklore mythologies. I love the way the storytelling is done. I have been very nervous to incorporate it into my writing because it's so sacred to me. I don't want to mess it up, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess that was really it. I feel like I'm just like FaceTiming a friend. Marco Polo, do you know like Marco Polo, the app, how you just like send your friend a quick video talk? That's what I feel like this was. Anyway, bye. Love you guys.